Hi folks, welcome back. This is session 13 and we are going to talk about uh, clustering today. Um, so we have seen before that uh, we have worked with uh, infinite uh, with mixture models, right? With models that try to use different uh, modes to perform some inference on the data and to try to fit some information that that corresponds to the data that we're seeing. So if you remember, we discussed about working with uh, mixture Gaussian models, for instance, or mixture of, of experts, or some other type of mixture uh, in which we combine k different um, of these models to make some predictions, right? But all these cases, we have some finite amount of, of mixtures. We use these, uh, these um, finite models, but we choose some particular k to solve it, right? That is, we select how many Gaussians we want to use to do the mixture, how many um, experts we want to use to make the predictions. But what if we don't know what the optimum value of k is, right? In that case, we have these Dirichlet process mixture models in such a way that we can try to infer what the the best value of k can be in these models and we go in some sense into an infinite mixture model in in such a way that we can select the amount of of points that we want and in the in the long run we can even select an infinite amount of these models to to make it work so what i am saying here for instance um we can think of the of the fir, of the beginning of these of the of these uh, processes as having some alpha value that that will um, condition here some pi latent variable, and this pi latent variable we will use it to condition some latent CIs, and this set I uh, will condition our observed data x and we have n of these particular observations right and what we also have here is that we will have some also some hyperparameter lambda here and this lambda will give us these theta keys that are also uh, defining our, our our model such way that we have k of these and this mixture also influences our data over here so what i am saying is that this data uh, depends on two things our latent variable that corresponds to which um mixture I'm, I'm, I'm using it the parameters of that mixture and then i have some prior that will uh, model these C uh, said eyes, and now this process over here will allow me to to infer what I'm looking for, and this works if I have a finite process here uh, in the following form. So I will have this probability of x i conditioning my in my variables, right? So that z i is uh, like I'm I am in the kth uh, cluster here, and some parameters. And I want these to be conditioned then only on the kth parameter, right? So what I'm saying here is in the general form, I expect that each of my data points um, condition that it belongs to the kth cluster, given the parameters of the whole uh, system here, it's equal to just the data condition on the kth uh, cluster, right? And the probability of, of belonging to each of those clusters, it is just a categorical. So I have here that P of set I equal to K uh, given pi is equal to some pi K, okay? So this is just a categorical variable as you may recall from previous lessons. And then um, the probability of this uh, pi K over here, that, that will be this one, right? Uh, given alpha, uh, so my prior over here is a Dirichlet over pi 
and I will use this uh, alpha k multiplied by one uh, vector here of ones. Uh, as my parameter, okay. So that means like all these categories here have the same the same probability of appearing. And what I'm going to be looking for over here is that this um, p of theta k given lambda. That is, uh, it should be. I will select this such that it is the conjugate of this uh, distribution of my data, right? So. Uh, conjugate of pxi given theta k. So again, we want to do this just to simplify our, our computations, right? So I'm going to select the shape of this uh, prior here, depending on the on the shape of my data. And we can even simplify this if, if we want to make some some adjustments. So for instance. I may have some some prior distribution here, and I'm gonna assume that this is actually equivalent to sampling theta theta k from some distribution h that depends on lambda, and that this um, pxi here is also coming from some process f here that depends on this theta set i. So if I have this, this change here, this reparameterization, what will happen is like I can simplify this whole mixture model over here and I can have some something much, much simpler such that for instance, I have this alpha that will have some G function over here and my H process and this uh, G depends on both of them. And this G will generate these uh, representatives of my of my classes theta i and I will have these xi's and I will have again n of these such that I can simplify the whole uh, generative process because now what I have is that this um, the whole thing I'm just replacing it with this g function here that we just call it um, a random probability measure. And this G comes uh, from the Gaussian, uh, sorry, from the Dirichlet process, right? So this Dirichlet process, um, what it is doing is like, I'm going to define this G of theta as just the summation of the responses. So I will have K, K different responses and they are weighted by the pi K of each of those classes. And then I will have an impulse response over here on over theta. This means like I'm going to do the summation of the these input responses placed at each of those parameters uh, theta here. So what I'm doing is I'm just averaging those using the pi k as my as my weight. And these uh, as, as we saw here, then my pi k can be um, distributed as a Dirichlet with alpha k times one, right? So it is the same thing as we have here. And my theta k's, they come from this h, as I told you before, right? So they come from this h lambda. That is this the same shape over here. So what we have is that now I can simplify my, my process, right? I just simply draw from this. And this is uh, what we call a Dirichlet process. All right, so this is my Dirichlet process with some um, a base measure alpha, sorry, concentration parameter alpha, and some base measure h. We just call it some some, some distribution from which I'm going to be taking my my data out of, uh, sorry, my my parameters out of, right? So, in other words, what I'm saying is that. My Dirichlet process is a distribution over these probability measure spaces, right? Such that my G uh, defines these functions that go from this parameter space theta into some R uh, positive value here. And this is uh, subject to that this measure, it's positive, 
or greater than zero, uh, that the integral of this uh, measure is, is equal to one. And I want the joint of my of some partition in the space of this g pi to to it to be uh, distributed as a Dirichlet such that it will have this h t up to h t k right and again what I'm saying here is that this should behave as a distribution, right? It's a probability measure. Because I'm forcing it to be positive or, e or uh, equal to zero, the, integ the integral should be equal to one. And then for a given partition in the space of theta, that means like if I just partition this theta space into a bunch of, of, uh, of partitions. So what I'm saying is this, like if this is my, my theta space, I just want to partition this into T1, T2, up to Tk partitions. And what will happen is that when I apply this measure to these, these partitions, it should behave as a Dirichlet distribution, okay? And we have some particular um, properties. For instance, if H is Gaussian, the, then these marginals become uh, betas, okay? So for instance, if my base measure is a Gaussian, what I'm saying over here is that then um, my my marginals of these of this space right these GT uh, i's will become a beta right then the marginal here the GTI is actually a beta of alpha H T I with these Alpha, the summation of i different from j, h, t, j. So what I'm saying is like I will have a beta around my t i, and the second parameter here, the 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 beta or the b parameter of the beta, is the summation of all the other partitions, right? So marginalizing these is just taking one the i and then using that as my alpha, and then everything else will be my my beta of this of this parameter and then it also has some properties that if i have the union of two distributions or of two partitions over here that is you have ti union tj and this is equal to tij for instance then uh, the measure of each of those uh, the sum of the measures Oh, sorry, TJ here equals or is equivalent to the measure applied to the union, right? To the TIJ here. So it is the same thing as applying this measure to these partitions individually or doing the union of those and then applying the measure to uh, both of them. So that is that is nice. And my pies that, that come from this uh, Dirichlet I can have that my my sets given the given this pi parameter over here, then they will be a categorical. Okay, so that is also really nice. So if pi is distributed as a Dirichlet in alpha, then my sets given pi are a categorical of pi. So that is also really, really help, helpful. And if I kind of want to do the margin, marginal of this, I can just uh, compute it. And this will also be a categorical with respect of the alpha parameters, alpha one over alpha zero, alpha k over alpha zero, where alpha zero is just the sum of all the alphas, if you remember, like is, it is like a Dirichlet. So what it, this is saying is that my, um, when I take the conditional, like I condition with respect of these pi uh, variables here, or marginalize and just jump straight forward to my uh, sets, my, my my free parameters over here, that in this case is the alpha and the and the lambda. So I can find my my uh, cluster or the the part or yeah the cluster that I will belong to. Okay, 
And I can do the same thing for my, my posterior over here, my pi given z also. Uh, it is uh, distributed as a Dirichlet. And this Dirichlet is um, alpha plus the indicator function of z equal to that particular value. So alpha k plus the indicator of z equal to k. So in general, what I can say is um, the following, okay? So if my measure here is a Dirichlet process using this concentration parameter alpha and a base measure h, then the probability of my parameter belonging to a TI partition is equal to evaluating that partition using my uh, base measure, right? So what I'm saying is, what is the, the probability? I'm, I'm, I'm translating the probabilities of belonging to one of these partitions in this theta space to evaluating the whole set of partitions given my measure, right? So that is, that is neat. And then uh, we can compute the posteriors here. And my posterior of uh, of my of my of my joint, uh, given the the space uh, the the partitions here, dk given all my parameters is equal to a Dirichlet in this alpha ht one plus the indicator of this theta belonging to T1 and all the way from this alpha A, sorry, H, TK plus the indicator of theta belonging to TK, right? So my my probability of the joint given the all the whole parameters, it is a Dirichlet, where the Dirichlet is the distribution now of the measure of the base measure plus the indicator of, of, of those uh, thetas belonging to each of those partitions. Um, and my g given these uh, uh, theta bars, these uh, uh, average values over here of my thetas, uh, it is proportional to Oh, sorry, uh, given the alphas and given the h's, right? It is proportional to a Dirichlet process. So, sorry, it is drawn from or a Dirichlet process with alpha plus, plus n and one over alpha plus n times this alpha h plus the sum of the delta theta that I'm looking for. So, in general, my g, um, given the whole set of parameters, it is distributed as a Dirichlet process such that we have the count, the, the n values plus my prior alpha that I'm using here. And the second parameter here is just one over that sum times the alpha, my, my base measure over here that is related to, to, the, to the count of the, where is it? Okay, over here, to the, to the Base measure used in the in the parameters, plus the sum of these delta uh, theta that, that we are using. Okay, so yeah, that is the introduction of uh, this Dirichlet process. So again, just uh, trying to bring it back. This is in the same lines as doing some uh, computations that we did in the Gaussian process. That instead of working with the parameter itself, we want to go one level further and we were working with the, the distribution of functions. In this case, we're more interested in, in modeling um, these non-parametric, uh, uh, in a non-parametric way, right? And remember like this is a misnomer because non-parametric does not mean that I don't have parameters. It means like I will have an infinite number of parameters. Like I will have so, so many, so many parameters that it is really hard to to just uh, call it a parametric, okay? Um, in that sense, what we are going to do is then replace just a fixed amount of clusters by this infinite amount of of, um, 
of partitions and then just trying to marginalize with respect of those. And in the, in the following talks, we are going to, to discuss about how to implement these and some other ways of using it, okay? So stay tuned.